Since 2017, when the Nintendo Switch released to critical and commercial success, there have been so many companies pumping out an insane amount of handhelds for us to buy, ignore, gather dust, because end of the day, the Switch and the Steam Deck roll all. But do they really roll all? Ba bam <laughs> Let's find out. All right, I'm gonna start with the classic, the OG original Nintendo Switch. This is an original Nintendo Switch, the first model. You might be wondering why mine looks so sick. That's because it's real 24 karat gold. If you didn't know I had a real 24 karat gold Switch, that's because nobody watched the video. <laughs> Obviously, I don't use this anymore. I I'm sure a lot of us have moved on and upgraded to the OLED, at the very least, the better battery Switch that came later. So the original Nintendo Switch, it's good, but I'd rather use something else. Now, I'm gonna have to also put the version two of the original. It was like a little refresh. And yeah, it's the same. It's just, I'd rather use something else. And that something else, you might have guessed, it's this bad boy right here. I've been using this Nintendo Switch OLED since the OLED came out. I love it so much. The Nintendo Switch really rekindled my love for handheld gaming. I've always been a handheld gamer ever since I was a kid and I had a Game Boy Advance SP, probably one of the best handhelds of all time. And then yeah, the Switch. I have honestly played more hours poor portable in the Switch than I have docked. And this OLED screen, still, with all these other consoles, nothing even comes close to the visual color fidelity other than the Steam Deck OLED, of course. But even the original Steam Deck, I was like, oh, it's powerful, I like that. But man, the colors, the colors of the OLED, I really missed it. Yeah, as much as I love all of these consoles for all of their differences, there is one thing that they all have in common, and that's that they can all use Raycon's everyday earbuds just like we all can. <laughs> In fact, two of these consoles can connect to the earbuds at the same time. And you might have heard me talk about Raycons before, but they just got a massive upgrade. Now the everyday earbuds have a new active ergonomic design, multi-point connectivity that allows you to pair two devices at once. They're even water resistant. And in just 10 minutes, you can quick charge up to 90 minutes of playtime. They go toe to toe with some of the biggest brands in audio. I take them to the gym five times a week. They don't fall out of my ears when I'm on a bench decline doing reps. And the new active noise cancelling means I can block out even more of that gym hum and drum and, and, and the, the weightlifters grunting way too loud. <laughs> you don't need to grunt that loud. I don't, you can silently lift. <laughs> the last thing I'll say is something that I don't really ever mention in these spots, but buying a pair of Raycon does directly support my channel. So if you're on the fence about it and you're not too sure, if it helps you, you'd be helping me and all the content that I make. And if for whatever reason, it doesn't go the way you want, there's always that 30 day money back guarantee, baby. And better than all of that, I swear this is the biggest discount I've been able to give, I think ever for Raycon. Click the link below or go to buyraycon.com forward slash beatemups to get 20 to 40 percent off. I don't think I've ever said 40% off for Recon before, so now is the time. Next, the original Steam Deck. This is good, but I'd rather use something else, and that something else is my limited edition OLED. By the way, I bought both of my Steam Decks. Steam did not send me these. This Steam Deck, I gotta be honest, initially did not get a lot of use out of me. I made a video about it, I messed around with a couple games that I couldn't play on my Switch, but it really just gathered dust. And I think that's because in 2021, the Switch was still crushing it. I wasn't sick of the Switch, I wasn't really hitting any Switch limitations, but let's be honest, the Switch has really hit a wall. A lot of the third party stuff that's coming to the Switch now is just showing its age and really struggling. I'm really at the point now where I'm playing my Steam Deck as much as I'm playing my Switch. I've really grown to appreciate and love it over the last year. Next, let's do the ROG Ally. A lot of these handheld PCs are kind of a nightmare to use and a nightmare to set things up, especially the more knockoff ones, I just feel like ROG did a really good job at making it pretty easy to pick up, start installing games. They have their own inbuilt UI that keeps track of all your games once you install them. And it makes it feel more like a handheld, but I cannot bring myself to use this thing over the Steam Deck. I'm just a 
guy. And I just wanna pick up a game and play a game. Have I made this look as good as it can look? Have I tweaked enough of the settings? Have I blah, 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 blah? I, I don't wanna do that. And the ease of the Steam Deck's UI and its inbuilt Steam store, being able to just download anything on my account that I've had for like 15 years on PC. I know you can do a lot of that on the ROG Ally, but it's just, it's all inbuilt here. Which is how a lot of these handheld PC conversations with me are going to go. But the ROG Ally, for all intents and purposes, it's great, but I don't use it much. In the same vein as the ROG Ally, we have to take a look at this absolute behemoth Lenovo Legion Go. I actually love this insane thing. It is so heavy. The screen is so big. It's not an OLED, but it's a massive tablet. And then you have these essentially Joy-Cons that you can remove. I was in love with this thing when I reviewed it, and I gotta be honest, I played it a lot over the ROG Ally because of the screen. Bigger is, sometimes it is better. I gotta be honest. Also, these uh, Joy-Con grips are awesome. Being able to fully grip around here while I'm playing is very comfortable. I actually really like the Lenovo Legion Go. I actually like it more than the ROG Ally, but these are very comparable consoles. It's just a preference on if you want a massive behemoth or something just a little bit more portable. But in my opinion, when you're at the point where it's this big and it can't fit in your pocket, what's a little bigger? All right, while I was looking at all these handhelds, I saw this guy. That's like the 1X or something. I don't know, either way. Ooh, brother. Brother, ooh. I'm sure it's great, but do we need it? I mean, do we need it? Lenovo Legion Go, ROG Ally, 1X player, really? Alongside all of these, there's been a side resurgence of retro handheld consoles. I think the analog pocket did a lot to really blow up that scene. The Analog Pocket is awesome and impossible to buy. I was making a Temu video and I bought the Ambonic RG35XX on a whim. This thing blew me away. Out the box, it came with thousands of games already installed on it. This stuff is so cool, but I really wanted to upgrade because I see it as an upgrade to get an analog pocket because it comes with an actual slot as well to put the physical games in. Let's start with this, the Ambonic 35XX. This thing is great, but I don't use it much. And that's because I have this now. Just so happened to line up with this video and is not the reason why I'm making the video, I swear, but these just came in the mail. Ambonic RG 35XX SP. <laughs> You get it? It is literally an old school Game Boy SP and it's awesome. I'm sorry for swearing, I had to. Recently, I heard Dan on the H3 podcast talking about Final Fantasy tactics. And when you hear someone really passionate about a game like that, it just makes me want to check it out. Looked everywhere and apparently it's never been reissued or re-released that I can find. And then it hit me, sure enough, I scrolled down to GBA and I found Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. And I started playing that on this thing. I don't know if they had seen that I bought this one initially and they were like, do you want to try the new one or not. But either way, they reached out and sent me two of these, which is so cool because now Kim can have one and I can have one. I haven't even opened this one yet. I wanted to wait till I was here with you guys. And oh my God, I'm actually gonna cry. I have a lot of nostalgia for the SP specifically. Sorry, I'm a big baby. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna move the 35XX down to it's good, but I'd rather use something else. And I'm gonna slide the SP right up there into it's great, but I don't use it much. Cause I gotta be honest, I'm not huge into retro gaming in 20, 24. I said all of that to then go back to Analog Pocket. I'm gonna put it in it's great, but I don't use it much because I don't have it. Although the SP is good competition. It might be fine actually, but I'm gonna leave it there. Oh, we never did the Switch Lite. Ew, brother. <laughs> A lot of you are gonna be upset with me for this one. I have played one game on the Switch Lite because the Switch Lite initially released with Link's Awakening. I played that on this and then I never touched it again. It's cute. I love that it's all one color. There are definitely things about it I like. I think for me personally, this is an ooh brother. It's too small. Ooh. I'm the guy that when he can, uses this. Speaking of too small, I asked Bob and he was like, ever heard of the Nano RG? And I looked it up and it's a tiny little guy. You could fit it in your mouth. In fact, Bob did. Also, ooh brother, it's so small. It is cute though. Ooh. The whole line of GPD consoles. I don't know 
know anybody that uses these things. I don't know who the market is for these. If you're watching this and you have a GBD, please tell me why you have that. I actually got sent this by GBTD in 2016. And I remember they rightfully so harassed me because they sent it to me and I said I would review it. And then I didn't. I hated it. It's so ugly. Oh God, the little thumbsticks. So, uh, ooh, brother. Brother, ooh. Since then, GBD has made a ton of different consoles. I think this is one here. There's like a revolution around some of these consoles that have a screen, but you can slide up the screen and there's a keyboard underneath. I get where the necessity came from, but to me, it looks like a Blackberry. Anything with a keyboard to me, ooh, brother. On that topic, now that we've ranked one of the A and Neos, all the other A and Neos, so many A and Neos. Honestly, I'm sorry, A and Neo, because we had a pretty good relationship there for a little bit, but I had to stop. It was becoming a toxic relationship. A and Neo would send me a console, their newest, latest console to review, and I'd be in the middle of making the video the week that I got it, and they would announce their next console. I couldn't keep up. What was I supposed to do? Recommend this to my audience, knowing that something better is maybe six months away. The very first one, I gotta be honest, that one blew me away. At a time where people were asking for a Switch Pro, all of a sudden here was this A and Neo thing. Red Dead Redemption 2. I was only getting like 24 frames out of it at best, but it looked incredible and it was playable. I gotta stress, this is before the Steam Deck. This is before anything other than Switch. And then all of a sudden this little clear guy came out of nowhere and blew me away. So it was really cool at the time. It's not Ooh Brother. I don't think A and Neo's are that bad but I'd rather use something else. But they outdate themselves so quickly that they do become a little ooh brother, those early ones. Even this one here, this a &E Next, which they sent me just a year or two later, I have the 17th manufactured one that they branded beat-em-ups. But yeah, even this is better than the clear one as far as specs go, and then obviously it does look a bit sleeker and nicer as far as a console. And then they sent me th th this a and &E I don't even know what this one is. And then like, Two days later, they sent me this, the A and Neo Air. This was supposed to be a Switch Lite. Let's just say this is A and Neo Air, and we're gonna put it in Ooh Brother. Oh, here's my next. This one's fine. Oh, Bob told me to put this one in. This is actually pretty cool. <laughs> I take everything back that I said. This is the A and Neo Flip DS. I know, I know, it's ridiculous. There are so many. I don't have it, so I can't put it any higher than that. But essentially, its main purpose is to emulate DS and 3DS games. Oh, this is the Miu Mini. Another one of these, but it's small. So, ooh, brother, because we hate small. The play date. I have never even held one of these, but Bob has one, and I went to his house, and I asked him if I could play his, and he said he lost it. Turns out, it was right right where we were standing, but he didn't find it until later. It's not like a handheld PC that you do PC stuff. This is its own handheld console with its own firmware, software, and video games. And it all works with a little tiny crank. And a lot of the games that people develop for this thing use that crank in some way. It is really small, but I do want to give it its props for just being really unique and uh, a company just taking a stab at releasing a fun new handheld. This is the Aeon Odin. I did a video on this. I don't have it anymore. I actually sold it to my friend Ham. It's purely for emulation. It doesn't run anything, I think, over like PlayStation 1, just like this thing. But it's the form factor that made it really cool because it felt like a Switch. I love it. It was really neat. It was cool. The thing that frustrated me was Steam Deck, for example. You will download a game and you will start playing the game with the onboard controller because of course you would. This thing, you had to map and program every single thing yourself for every game every time, nothing just worked. It is good. I'd rather use something else. Finally, we are down to the PlayStation Portal. I have a love-hate relationship with this thing. When it first came out, I made a video on it. I was very negative. I have gigabyte internet, thousand down, thousand up. I just could not get this thing to work. Too spotty, it was laggy, it was blurry. But then, like a month or two later, I decided to upgrade my router and it fixed it. And ever since then, this thing was amazing. Without a hiccup, without a glitch, without any noticeable input lag, it was perfect. The screen looked great. I actually really love the way this thing looks and feels. It's not an OLED, but it's a very nice screen. And I'm not even kidding. I love this and I use it every day until last week when Sony pushed out an update for the PlayStation Portal to make it work better on public Wi-Fi. 
and ever since they did that, mine does not work anymore. I've reset my router a thousand times. I turn my internet on and off. I reset this thing a bunch of times. You can't revert the patch. I almost want to just forgive it because I'm sure they'll fix it. But I think it speaks volumes to this thing's main issue is that it is just a Wi-Fi streaming device and something as simple as a patch update can completely brick it. I'm going to be nice and I'm going to leave it and use it every day because I really have been. No, you know what? I'm not. Screw you. It's great when it works, but I don't use it much because it's broken. I'm so conflicted on this guy. I love it and I hate it. Uh, I'm back and I'm not talking about Raycon again, although check him out. Uh, I'm talking about the ROG Ally because since I made this video, and another one came out. I can't keep up. There's too many handhelds. I actually did a whole video on this recently and you can go and check it out. I have fallen in love with this. I've been using it a lot. I've been playing First Descendant on it recently. I apologize for that, but more than anything, I can play Fallout 76 on this. Big Wolf, I know, it's whatever. But I couldn't play it on this. It crashes on this instantly. This this thing cannot run Fallout. And probably because it doesn't have enough RAM, I don't know. So it's pretty clear that I'm gonna switch this with this and then put this into, I would rather use something else and the something else being its bigger brother. Okay, that's it. That's my tier list. The main popular ones that are out. This is uh, how I feel about it. Been on the internet too long, and I just assume every time I do a tier list, people are gonna be mad at me. I hope you liked it. You probably liked it. Let's assume you liked it. <laughs> I have a gold switch. You know about that? I had to tell you about this guy. Look at him. 24 carats. Bye.